Hey guys, welcome back to Life with Madeline, the vlog. Today I'm excited to share the next great trend with you guys, Richard Wagner, aka Wilhelm Richard Wagner. He may have died a long time ago, but that does not mean his influence stopped in the 19th century. This guy is still trending on Twitter centuries later. I mean it, how cool is that? So let me tell you a little bit about him so that you can understand why he's so cool too. So he was born May 22nd, 1813 in Germany and died February 13th, 1883 at age 69 in Italy. He almost made it to Valentine's Day. He was so close. He composed all kinds of things like operas and music, which had revolutionary influences on Western music. Whether that meant he was writing crazy stuff or he was reacting to other people's performances, he was an OG influencer. He also came from a very musical family. Several of his older sisters went on to become professional opera singers or actresses. That's pretty cool. That must have been a seriously talented family because Wagner actually taught himself the piano and composition. That's just insane. He decided eventually that he wanted to learn more, so he enrolled in Leipzig University. Apologies for the pronunciation because my German is not so great. I guess back then being in university was considered like super, super fancy and very, very, very prestigious. So he was feeling like a real high roller right around then. Now the stereotype of college students today is sweatpants, ramen noodles, and beer. Not exactly the glamour that Wagner experienced. He wasn't really enjoying school that much though. Um, so I guess it wasn't what he expected. He decided to learn more with self-study than textbooks. Um, and after leaving school, he wrote his first opera, Die Fien, or The Fairies in English. So I guess leaving school was a good idea for him. His success that year quickly turned, though. Until now. Yeah. His second opera was unpopular, so he fled Germany and decided to try and make it big in Paris, which also failed. His next several publications went up and down a bit in likes and dislikes, but he was doing well overall and was appointed to be conductor of the court opera in the 1840s. That's pretty cool, don't you think? Aside from the music, he also became somewhat of an advocate in the German Revolution from 1848 to 1849. He wrote many articles in favor of the revolution and was a big part of the uprising in Dresden in 1849. Unfortunately for him, the uprising was unsuccessful and a warrant for his arrest was issued, so again, he left Germany. Kind of a chicken if you ask me, but hey, not everyone can be Braveheart, you know. He lived in exile over the next 15 years and did not perform anything new during this period. Even though he wasn't performing, he was still composing, writing, and working around orchestras, though. He never stopped being a part of music or letting music be a part of him. He also wrote more political pieces on revolution. He is also greatly known for developing a new poetic musical drama that we today know as Leitmotifs, which literally means leading motives in the original German. The super cool Britannica Encyclopedia says about Leitmotifs, these musical figures would arise naturally as expressive vocal phrases sung by characters and would be developed by the orchestra as reminiscences to express the dramatic and psychological development. End quote. A famous piece with this is The Ring, and his social status really, really climbed after that, and so did his influence. He, con he continued to grow his fame and success like a proper celebrity, but unfortunately he died at the, fame of, at the peak of his fame from heart failure, which is pretty unfortunate because if he had lived longer, I mean, who would know where he'd be? Maybe the peak wasn't his peak. Maybe he would have gone even higher, but unfortunately we'll never know. Um, luckily for us, before his death, he orated his autobiography to his wife. He must have known that we'd still be talking about him 200 years later, huh? Now let's do some fast facts by Life with Madeline, the vlog. Now some of these are cool and some are a little uncool, so just buckle up. He was really racist against Jews and wrote several papers against them. So it actually might be a good thing he's not around anymore. He'd definitely be canceled, and we don't really need that negativity anyway. He got into music because he was interested in the theater and felt that the music added more drama to it. Hey, dramatic. He preferred to hide the orchestra in theaters to ensure that the audience would keep their focus on the vocalists and set design. He didn't want anyone actually looking at the uh, musical performers. 
And lastly, he had an austere and very moralistic kind of appearance, but in reality, he was described as being being very energetic, wisecracking, kind of a jokester, and he was also a total womanizer who openly cheated on both of his wives, wife number two being the one that he orated his autobiography to on his deathbed. Well, that's everything that I have today for Life with Madeline, the vlog. I hope you enjoyed today's episode on Richard Wagner. Bye!